Hi, take a look at this program that uses sound. I will now try to explain that program. It's made with two oscillators. I think you heard two sounds at the same time. And the sounds are directed at the different speakers. One is panned to the left, one's panned to the right. And um, the waveform is a triangle waveform. They're different waveforms. And so here we create the two oscillators. And then in the setup function, we create the canvas and uh, hook it into the web page. And then we start the both oscillators and we set the pan. Notice we have a number here, an argument for the start uh, methods of the oscillator. And um, we haven't set the frequency yet, so we don't want to start it right away. And this optional our, uh, first argument here says how long to wait before you start it. And these units are seconds. Then in draw, which happens uh, again and again, we do most of the work here. Um, so what do we do first? We decide that we want the animation and sound to take place over 400 frames. Um, and then if the, th this code here makes everything stop, once, we, once the frame count reaches this duration times 1.2, the 1.2 is this part, or the 0.2 is this part here. That's so you can watch and listen to the sounds after the two oscillators have, uh, they nearly merge. I have a little code in here to make them not merge because the sound is more interesting. Um, okay, so then we compute um, how far done we are. So it's like a percentage, but it's between zero and one. And then notice that these are not straight lines. They are curved. The higher sound lowers faster initially, and then the, um, the lowering slows down over time. And we do that with something called an easing function. This is the easing function here. We'll look at that more in a little bit. But uh, we calculate a doneness number, which allows us to produce this, this curve here. And then target is 220. That's hertz. That's the frequency, the number of cycles per second for the sound waves. This is 220 right here. The first sound starts an octave above. The other sound starts an octave below, and they work their way up. Listen to it one more time. 220 hertz, 440, 110. Also, hopefully you heard how it really slowed down the merging toward the end. Um, you might wonder why the red or the descending oscillator takes more vertical space here. And it's because, uh, consider a piano when you're going up a half step at a time. The frequency of the notes that are higher up are spaced farther apart than they are on the lower notes. And that's related to the fact that when we go up an octave, we double the frequency. Okay, so low start is this point. High start is this point. And then here we calculate the descending frequency and the ascending frequency given the current doneness and uh, the target and where we're starting. And I could talk a lot about this, this taking two to a certain power. Um, we're traveling one octave, and you double the frequency in an octave. So um, two to the power of one is two, so that makes a doubling. Two to the power of zero gives you a one, so that uh, doesn't change it. and um, the other values in between allow us to get to the other points 
um, between the where we start and where the target is. Then once we've calculated the descending and ascending frequencies, we set them in the oscillators. And then here, I lower the ascending frequency by 3 hertz, just so you get a more interesting sound at the end. And you should be able to hear beats. Um, you should be able to hear three um, kind of pulses yeah, per second while this part plays. Let me play it again. Listen for the beats. You should hear the beats starting now. Kind of like that. Okay, and then what are we doing here? The next bit of code calculates the how much of this vertical space in the canvas is used by the descending uh, drawing and how much is used by the ascending drawing. And the stroke weight makes the line double thick. And now we want to know if we're doing the same frequency here or close to it. Um, because if we are, then we'll draw it in purple, which is kind of a mixture of red and blue lights. And then here we draw the point for the descending line by taking the frequency, which ranges from here to here and mapping that onto the position from the top of the canvas down to the point where the lines meet, this meeting Y. Then we log some mess we log a message to the console, which is useful for um, capturing some data and kind of understanding what we're doing. And then if we're not if they're not at the same frequency, then we draw the blue line. We stroke blue and then we do a point um, at, uh, I didn't mention here, the frame count, that's the x-coordinate. So the frame count starts at 1 and increments. Uh, so that's what moves from the left to the right. And then the y-value is, is this. And it takes the ascending frequency, which has a range of low start to target. And we map that into um, a value from height, which is here, up to the meeting y. Okay, what's left now is this easing out function. And let me just show you a picture. Uh, it's a graph of this um, equation here, x squared plus 2x. And it gives this shape. So I think you might recognize that shape uh, from here, um, this one. So this is a mathematical formula that will allow us to have the sounds change faster at the beginning than they do later. You see how the climb, how this angle here is uh, much steeper at the beginning and then it gets very, very shallow and then it eventually stops. Okay, um, I think I'll stop there. I'll just play it one more time and then I'll stop. I'll put a link to this program in the comments. Take a look.